Both of these are images of the same objects taken at the same magnification, but one of them is done using a long wavelength and one of them is done using a short wavelength. As you can see in the long wavelength one, the two objects appear as one, while in the short wavelength you can see them as two distinct objects. This is what resolution is. So using a short wavelength gives you higher resolution. You can see more detail. Okay, this is an optical microscope, like the ones you find in schools. They use lights between wavelength of 700 and 400 nanometers. Here's an image of a cell that you could see under a light microscope like this. But what if we want to measure more detail and want to zoom in more to get higher magnification? We can use electron microscope. For example, this one is a transmission electron microscope. And you can see with this one, you get much higher resolution and also more magnification. So why is this? Okay, so if we, we use electrons and accelerates electrons to a, a voltage of around maximum of around 100 kilo volts. So if you uh, accelerate electrons to this velocity, its wavelength will be very, very, very small. So approximately 0 0.004 nanometers. Now this doesn't mean we can get a resolution that high. The actual resolution from this is up to 0 0.1 nanometers for various reasons we'll come on to later. But you can see we, this will still much higher resolution than the light microscope that we saw a minute ago. So how does a transmission electron microscope work? At the start, we have an electron gun, which uses thermionic emission here, and that emits electrons, and they get accelerated across the accelerating voltage, and then it goes to the condenser lens. The condenser lens's job is to deflect the electron uh, beams and form parallel rays like this, and these parallel rays go through a thin sample of specimen. So for example, the cells, in, that we saw a minute ago, they need to be sliced into very thin um, sections and the, the electrons can either go through them if it's thin enough or be absorbed if it's thick. After that, it goes to the objective lens, which deflects the ray again. How, does, so how do these lenses work? They're not the same as optical lenses. They are actually electromagnets and they deflect the electron beam from using the magnetic field. For example, one of the rays, if the ray goes to the center, it's actually not deflected at all just goes straight through the center. However, if it goes near the magnetic field, it's deflected towards the central axis. And you can see the image is formed here. After it goes through the objective lens, it goes through, um, the, the objective lens job was to firstly magnify. As you can see, this image is slightly larger, and it's, so it's been magnified. It's also been inverted as well. Um, and so it's formed this intermediate image in the, uh, before the project lens. After the project lens, the project lens will actually do the same job as here, but it will magnify it further, forming a really large image and bring it to focus on this fluorescent screen where the final image is produced. Okay, if you calculate the de Broglie wavelength for an electron accelerator at 100 kilowatts, you get 0 0.004 nanometers. However, the resolution is much lower. Why is this? Well, one of the limitations is called lens abrasion. Now, this is because when the electrons leave the electron gun, they have different amounts of velocity. Some are traveling faster than others. So this means that electrons leaving from the same point may not necessarily meet at the same point after they've been after they've gone through the, um, the lens because the, the magnetic field will deflect them different amounts based on their speed. So you can see this, for example, here. So if they're all traveling at the same speed, they should come to focus at the same point if they're leaving from the same point. However, if they had different amounts of velocities, the ones that are traveling faster will be deflected less and the ones that are traveling um, slowly won't be deflected as much. So you can see there's like a blur here. The image isn't focused. So this reduced the resolution slightly. The second thing that reduced the resolution is the sample's thickness. When the electrons are directed towards the sample, they will go through the less dense part and they will be absorbed by the more dense parts, yeah. But overall, their speed is still decreased, even the ones that go through. So when the speed is decreased, the wavelength is increased, and we know that's going to reduce the resolution. The reason for this is, if the wavelength is longer, then the sample, the, the waves will get refract, uh, diffracted more, so meaning that it will be blurred.